Good afternoon. Today we'll continue a series of devotions that are based on Thomas Akempis' devotional classic, The Imitation of Christ. It was written back in the 1500s by a German who lived in the Netherlands. But those ancient words can still speak to us as we seek to follow God. Today we'll be looking at three chapters, starting with chapter 9, on obedience and discipline. It is an excellent thing to live under obedience to a superior and not to be one's own master. It is much safer to obey than to rule. Many live under obedience more of necessity than of love, and such people are often discontented and complaining. They will never attain freedom of mind unless they submit with their whole heart for the love of God. Go where you please but nowhere will you find rest except in humble obedience under the rule of a superior. Preference for other places and desire for change have unsettled many. Everyone gladly does whatever he most likes and likes best those who think as they do. But if God is to dwell among us, we must sometimes yield our own opinion for the sake of peace. Who is so wise that they know all things? <laughs> so do not place too much reliance on the rightness of your own views, but be ready to consider the views of others. If your opinion is sound and you forego it for the love of God and follow that of another, you will win great merit. I have often heard that it is safer to accept advice than to give it. It may even come about that each of two opinions is good, but refuse to come to an agreement with others when reason or occasion demand it. This is a sign of pride and obstinacy. Now chapter 10, on avoiding talkativeness. Avoid public gatherings as much as possible, for the discussion of worldly affairs becomes a great hindrance, even though it be with the best of intentions for we are quickly corrupted and ensnared by vanity. Often I wish I had remained silent and had not been among people. But why is it that we are so ready to chatter and gossip with each other when we so seldom return to silence without some injury to our conscience? The reason why we are so fond of talking with each other is that we think to find consolation in this manner and to refresh a heart wearied with many cares. And we prefer to speak and think of those things that we like and desire, or of those which we dislike. Alas, however, all this is often to no purpose, for this outward consolation is no small obstacle to inner and divine consolation. We must watch and pray that our time may not be spent fruitlessly. When it is right and proper to speak, speak to edify. Evil habits and neglect of spiritual progress are the main cause of our failure to guard the tongue. But devout conversation on spiritual matters greatly furthers our spiritual progress, especially with those who are heart and soul with us in the service of God. And finally for today, chapter 11 on peace and spiritual progress. We could enjoy much peace if we did not busy ourselves with what other people say and do, for this is no concern of ours. How can anyone remain long at peace who meddles in other people's affairs, who seeks occasion to gad about, and who makes little or no attempt at recollection? Blessed are the single-hearted, for they shall enjoy much peace. How were some of the saints so perfect and contemplative? It is because they strove with all their might to mortify themselves to all worldly desires and could thus cling to God in their inmost heart and offer themselves freely and wholly to him. But we are held too firmly by our passions and are too much concerned with the passing affairs of the world. We seldom completely master a single fault and have little zeal for our daily progress. Therefore, we remain spiritually cold or tepid. 
If only we were completely dead to self and free from inner conflict, we could savor spiritual things and win experience of heavenly contemplation. But the greatest, and indeed the whole obstacle to our advance, is that we are not free from passions and lusts, nor do we strive to follow the perfect way of the saints. But when we encounter even a little trouble, we are quickly discouraged and turn to human comfort. If we strove to stand firm in the struggle like people of valor, we should not fail to experience the help of our Lord from heaven. For he is ever ready to help all who fight, trusting in his grace. He also affords us occasions to fight that we may conquer. If we rely only on the outward observances of religion, our devotion will rapidly wane. But let us lay the axe to the root, that being cleansed from our passions, we may possess our souls in peace. If each year we would root out one fault, we should soon become perfect. <laughs> but alas, the opposite is often the case, that we were better and purer at the beginning of our conversion than after many years of our profession. Our zeal and virtue should grow daily, but it is now held to be a fine thing if someone retains even a little of his first fervor. If only we would do a little violence to ourselves at first, we would later be enabled to do everything easily and gladly. It is hard to give up old habits, and harder still to conquer our own wills. But if you cannot overcome in small and easy things, how will you succeed in greater? Resist your evil inclinations in the beginning, and break off evil habits, lest they gradually involve you in greater difficulties. Oh, if you could only know how great a peace for yourself and how great a joy for your fellows your good endeavor would win, you would have a greater care for your spiritual progress. Would you pray with me, please? Always remind us, Lord, that you begin us on a spiritual journey, and it is not an easy journey to travel. Grant us humility perseverance and wisdom as we seek you and seek you alone to the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.